Hey guys, I'm Sam Crack, and recently over on my Instagram, I asked you guys whether you prefer to see me gamble on these cheap dead auction cars like our $1,000 Mini Cooper, or if you want to see me lose my shirt on another Ferrari. And surprisingly, the comments were pretty mixed. Admittedly, it's a lot easier to buy a Mini Cooper than a Ferrari. I could literally buy 40 dead $1,000 Minis for the price of one total Ferrari. And while it's tough to compare the two, there's actually less risk in the cheaper cars, since they're literally sold by bank, lease companies, and dealers at bottom of the barrel as is parts car prices. On the other hand, out of three BMW gambles, if you include this Mini, only one of them will actually end up working. The other two were DOA. With everyone and their grandmother rebuilding wrecked cars, I took a step back and saved up a bit of cash so that I could ponder whether or not to take on a bigger, more long-term and expensive project, and I think it's almost time. The cheap gambles are fun, there's little to lose, and if you're into flipping, there's a bit to gain, but nothing is more satisfying than driving a Lamborghini that looks better than it did new and knowing it was a prior write off. Now let me know your thoughts about this in the comments. I hope it all sounds good to you and if you like things that sound good you'll definitely enjoy a set of Raycon earbuds. Now I've been using this exact set of Everyday E25s daily for over a year now. Look this is me a year ago showing you how simple it is to make and take a phone call with their built in microphone. This is the lightest set of wireless earbuds I've ever used which makes them super comfortable. And even though they're small their sound packs a huge punch. They've got a crisp sound that's bassy so if you're like me and into rap and hip hop you're going to appreciate them even more. With the built-in battery in its storage case, it will keep the battery charge fresh for whenever you're ready to use them. You can get easily an entire day of use out of one full charge. Raycon's Everyday E25s provide an incredible listening experience at about half the price of other boutique brand wireless earbuds out on the market. And right now, when you visit buyraycon.com slash samcrack or click the link in the description box, you're going to save an additional 15% off the already low price on a set of Everyday E25s. And Raycon stands by their product. For some reason these don't fit your lifestyle, there's a full 45 day money back guarantee. Again, head on over to buyraycon.com slash samcrack and I want to give a huge thanks to Raycon for this little innovation with super big sound and for sponsoring this video. I got a call a couple days ago from Sam Crack uh, saying that he's got a Mini Cooper 2008. He says that the car is not starting, is not even responding to anything when you put the key and nothing happens and it shows you just the key sign. Uh, so he basically didn't know what to do and he thought it might be a problem with the security system Which he was right because yeah, it, it was a problem with the security system And I'll show you quickly how we determined that, that this is the problem and how we got this problem resolved So here you go. This is the parts that we requested from Sam which is the engine control module for the Mini Cooper uh, security module that is also known as a CAS module and his original key that came with the vehicle so all these three parts are required to uh, get everything diagnosed properly and determine which one of those things is failing. So let me show you now how we test those parts. Before we connect anything, this is our actual uh, BMW bench simulator. Uh, so here you can see we have different type of uh, ignition switches and key slots, uh, the start button, the actual thing from the Mini Cooper. This is a placement for the cast module. Uh, this is different connectors for the cast module, including BMW 7 Series cast module, um, different type of connectors for the engine computer, gauge cluster, and ICOM as a BMW factory scan tool in order for us to communicate with any of those computers and test them up. So now let's get everything connected. So I take the cast module first, get it connected on a bench, connect the proper uh, key cartridge like this. Uh, take the engine control module and get this thing connected as well. So the engine control module is connected on the bench, the cast module is connected on the bench, and here we go. We take the original key that came with the vehicle, we plug it in, and as soon as I press the start button, nothing happens on the gauge cluster. It looks like it's completely dead, won't respond to anything. So what we did, we uh, generated brand new key, which you can see right here. This is the original key, and this is a new one. Since we realized that this key is doing nothing when you try to connect it on the bench, then we realized that the cast module by itself communicates with the scanner, uh, even without the key. An engine control module communicates as well, so we figured that was a key problem. And again, this is the original key that didn't do anything. This is a new key that we programmed for Sam. 
and as soon as I plug the key in the new one and hit the start button, you will see all the lights on the dash, which means that right now the security module recognized the key and uh, it turned the ignition on. So here we go. Brand new key right now works just fine and I can easily remove it from the ignition and the ignition turns on, turns off automatically and if I put it back in, it will turn back on. And again, if I take original key, it doesn't do anything. Literally nothing happens and it shows. So if you see a sign like this, that's an indication of a not compatible key or your security module being defective. All right, just raced home, got this box. This is supposedly the solution to our Mini Cooper issues in here. Our original computers, I think unmodified. The main issue, as you heard from Valentin over at ECU team, was the key fob itself. We had what sounds like the completely wrong key fob. So here are our keys here and Okay, so this is a replacement. You could just see it looks a little bit different. And I'm assuming this is the old key. Yeah, remember the old key had that writing on the back. So this is going to be the fix. Before we get inside and plug this in, we've got to reinstall our modules. So I'm gonna start under the hood with our ECU, and then we'll move inside with the immobilizer. This should get this Mini off the trailer and hopefully make this little car an awesome cheap auction steal. Yep, this just slides right in and clicks into place here. It's nice and secure. One, snug, two, and three. Nice and snug. Now our battery is disconnected. This was disconnected from last time we took these modules out. We're gonna leave it disconnected until we plug in our immobilizer and then we will put the battery on and start it up. Man, I'm so excited, I hope it starts up. All right, you see in here, there's two cables that the immobilizer's plugged into, one right here, and then the ribbon cable next to it. This is very similar to what you saw in the bench testing video from ECU team. Uh, they had a BMW cluster instead of our mini cluster here. So we are all hooked up at this point. And now for the exciting part, here is our replacement key. Let's get in and I don't think I have anything unhooked in here that's gonna give us an issue. Let me make sure because there is an airbag right here. No, it's just unbolted, it's not unhooked. All right, now the key in the ignition. Whoa, there it goes. All right, that's a much better start. Foot on the clutch. Oh, okay. <laughs> of course, of course. That's because I didn't tighten down the battery. I'm almost positive. Let's go and actually crank the battery terminal down. Try again. You hear all those good noises? This was not tight enough. Somebody definitely had to have swapped the key out on us on auction, but the moment of truth will our code clearing of the steering wheel column lock and the replacement key from ECU team fix the Mini Cooper. Three, two, one. There it is. It sounds pretty good too. Let's see. No check engine codes. Oh yeah, this car. This is a huge, huge auction win, huge. Oh, airbag light, that might've actually been unhooked. Okay, let's shut this off. Still super pumped to drive this thing. Yes, we're gonna get under here. We're gonna fix the steering wheel column lock once and for all. We're gonna button up all our trim and then take our mini for a ride. So satisfying to see the Mini finally off the trailer. It was sitting on there over a week, and I gotta give a huge thanks to Valentin and ECU team. They're the first guys that popped up when I did a quick Google search for how to repair a Mini ECU, and they do all sorts of uh, European, Asian uh, car computer repairs. They diagnose all sorts of modules, key repairs, so if you're having some sort of strange electrical issue, or you lost your keys entirely, you might wanna hit them up before you go to the dealership, because it's likely gonna be way cheaper. 
I'm gonna link their YouTube channel down in the description box below. They have some cool technical videos over there. And again, I can't recommend them enough because the turnaround time was super speedy. Now let's hop in the Mini. We're gonna bring it around here. We're gonna button up a few things. And hopefully it's good enough to take on a drive. I move the Mini into the shade here. We've got one last thing to do before we button up the rest of this dashboard and see how the car is mechanically. And that is eliminate the steering column lock. The thing that fails so many of these BMW and Mini cars. And we're gonna do that very simply with this little emulator module here. This basically tricks the system at all times into thinking this is okay. So whether this actually was mechanically failed or electrically failed, well, we're eliminating it, not by removing it, by swapping it with this box. See the connector there? It's as simple as unplugging it and plugging it in here. However, the steering wheel is currently locked because there's no key in the ignition. So in order to install it first, you just go, put the key in the ignition, you hear that click? That unlocks the steering wheel. Then, with the steering wheel unlocked, we can go and unplug our module. There it is. All right, if I have to listen to that chime any longer, I'm gonna go crazy. We just plug it right in here, and that's it. We could stuff that behind here, and see our steering wheel? It's still unlocked when we shut the car off. Should still remain unlocked. So like I said, we basically eliminated the lock portion and the car should still run through its initial checks when we put the key in and start up. So we'll put our foot on the clutch, the key back in the ignition. There it is. That chime is maddening. Second I put this car into first gear and just moved it a few feet, it will move. Uh, it does feel quite sluggish. The check engine light popped up right there. I believe that's the limp mode light. When I give it gas, it feels really rough. So we're gonna shut it off here. Let's put it back into accessory mode and then we'll plug back in our diagnostic reader, see what codes that it's generated. We're gonna plug in Carly. And if you're considering buying a Mini Cooper, make sure you get yourself a Carly along with it. For no other reason, you shut that annoying chime off. All right, so ignition coil cylinder three. That's telling us that maybe we've got a faulty ignition coil. That'd be an easy fix. Misfire on several cylinders would go along with that ignition coil. Then it says cylinder one misfire. And then uh, blow off valve plausibility. That's weird. Oh, Vanos codes. Those are never any fun. And then the last one is a strange can message and uh, that's probably no big deal. So the Vanos code is somewhat concerning, as are the misfires. Let's get in the engine bay, swap around some coil packs, and check the spark plugs. All right, I believe our cylinder order goes one, two, three, four. This is where it's telling us we've got a problem with the ignition coil. Look, it's not even plugged in. This, see, it's missing the cap here. You usually pop these caps. Yeah, these are all a bit worn. What happens is you usually pop this and it pops it out a little bit. You see like right here? See how I pop the wire out? So cylinder three is not even plugged in all the way. So right there, that's gonna fix cylinder number three. That is potentially not snug. Then it's telling us we got an issue with cylinder number one, which would be this guy right here. So again, one, two, three, four. We technically fixed three. We need a new coil pack there. And then I just noticed this, look at this. This coil pack is not even seated properly and I think it's just broken these things usually are very snug see like this one it's tough to pull out all right I've got a little bit of a mess going on here let me pull a couple plugs and just see what they look like I got three out of the four plugs out of here. I couldn't get this one out because it's missing this top piece where you see you grip it here and pull it up. With this missing, this is really snug in there. And I'm gonna end up just ripping this out probably with the pliers. But for right now, we're just gonna leave it sitting because I don't wanna damage it if we're gonna attempt to test drive this car right now. The plugs all look virtually the same. I'd assume that third one looks just like this. And just for good measure, I would replace all four plugs and I would replace all the coils. You see, we've got like one brand here. And then see these others look different. I'm not sure which one this is. This looks like an OEM one, as does this. 
and this looks aftermarket. So somebody's been in here and fixed them as they need them. It'd be nice to have four brand new plugs and coils and probably make this thing run a whole lot better. All right, just cleared all our codes again. Got the key in the ignition. I would tell you that startup definitely feels a lot smoother. Well, it feels way smoother. All right, let's feel the power or lack thereof of a Mini Cooper S. Oh yeah, oh, it's there. <laughs> it's definitely back. Pretty good, much, much better. And there goes our, our engine fault, oh man. And we're off in the thousand dollar Mini Cooper. You hear that exhaust back there. There's only a single tailpipe, so I think it's got an aftermarket exhaust on it. This car has quite a few performance modifications, and the kind of torquey feel that it has, well, I've never driven one of these. I'd imagine this one very well could have a, an aftermarket tune, good for maybe like an additional 20 or 30 more wheel horsepower. Even though we just had that limp mode code, I stopped, I checked everything again. Basically, this car went into a soft limp mode, kind of like you would experience with a BMW. So when you shut the car off and turn it back on, it will still keep the code stored to let you know that there's a problem, but it will take it out of limp mode. Our code was for a blow-off valve or a diverter valve, and that's a very common failure in a lot of these four-cylinder turbo cars, not just Mini Coopers, but like Volkswagens as well. Now where I'm currently at is only about 15, 20 minutes away from a Mini Cooper dealership. And I called them up just because I still have the tools here. Look, on the floor from putting the dashboard back together and that work we did underneath the hood. I figured it'd be cool to go there, buy the diverter valve and install it in the parking lot until they told me that it's $150, which is absurd because the same exact part over at FCP Euro is only 50. And remember, I do wanna buy the coil packs as well. So for about $150, we're gonna have all new coil packs and we're gonna have a uh, brand new diverter valve. I don't see any point in wasting money on a budget build like this just to have it today, especially when the car is driving pretty darn good. I just imagine if I get back into a very high boost scenario, high RPMs, uh, it's going to throw the code again. Basically what happens is this diverter valve fails internally, it kind of falls apart, and you get a new one every several 10,000 miles. It will take about 20 minutes to install. It's right underneath the turbo shielding on the side of the turbocharger. The big thing I want to do right now is to continue driving this car. Log about 15, 20 miles on it, make sure nothing else feels or seems failed, and it's doing great. No other lights are popping up, and Frankly, that limp mode hasn't even come back on. This car feels very healthy, and all in all, for $1,000 plus what we put into it to get it to work, I am thrilled. The big spend on this car was the $375 to get the replacement key to obviously just to get it to work. It's really unfortunate because clearly this car had the right key when it came into auction and there was a mishap somewhere that left us with the wrong key and a little bit lighter of a wallet, but not much lighter of a wallet if you consider going to the dealership to get that replacement key. They'd want to sell you a new immobilizer system along with a new key and I'm not sure if ECU team told me that you need a whole new ignition and reprogramming of the engine computer as well, I think. They told me it'd be well over $1,000 at the dealership if you went in just missing the key. The only other thing that we spent money on at this point was that little black box that defeats the steering column lock. A must have, I think, for anybody that has one of these Mini Coopers or any BMW with the steering column lock. It comes with the confidence of knowing you'll never be locked out again. And it was only $50, it's super simple to install. So as the car sits we're only in at sixteen hundred and twenty five dollars and it's driving great but remember we do want to get at least one coil pack I'm gonna opt for four brand new ones but if you wanted to keep to a super budget I don't feel any hesitation or issues I think they're all working we definitely want to replace the loose one FCP Euro sells one coil pack for 25 bucks and what you could do is when you replace the one loose one before you throw out the old one, take the top connector off of it and swap it to cylinder number three that's missing the connector. And right there, 
there's a free fix. So for well under two grand, we've got a running, driving Mini Cooper S. And the only last thing to really address is some of the comments in the prior video that were concerned about the reliability and the timing chain tensioner issue that these engines come with. Now, timing chain tensioner issues generally create slack in a timing chain, which is something that can be audibly heard. This engine sounds nice and healthy. And since this was the first year of this platform Mini Cooper, the turbocharged platform, uh, there were a bunch of technical service bulletins and a lot of people got a lot of pretty pricey components replaced on these cars. Whether this had a new timing chain setup done or a new head gasket or any of the other issues that these cars came with, I don't really know. I didn't get any of the service history with it. This one seems to have been maintained pretty well. It drives great, it sounds good. I'm fairly confident in it, and I think this is a four to $5,000 car retail just based on its condition, its modifications, and how well it drives. Well, our Mini isn't perfect in every single way. This is the perfect daily beater. This is the perfect car to lend to a family member or a friend if they're in town, they need to borrow one. I mean, you could fit a good amount of people or stuff in this thing. It's surprisingly spacious. It gets good gas mileage. It's very fun to drive all around. I am thrilled with it for under two grand. And could you imagine if the auction just didn't lose the keys, we'd be in this car under $1,500 and it's a steal for any of these numbers. If you agree, be sure to hit that like button. No joke, I just got back from picking up a live chicken. I brought my cage with me, put the chicken in the cage, put the cage in the hatch of the Mini Cooper. The chicken did not complain about the ride, not even once, which means this is a solid car. If you're wondering what sort of breed this hen is, she is a Calico Princess. If you're wondering how much she cost, uh, well, slightly more than the cost of one quail pack for the Mini Cooper. Now, talking about quail packs, I did order my quail packs and my diverter valve from FCP just now. I'll be getting that stuff within the next week. Throwing it in the Mini Cooper, there's really not a whole lot left to do on this car that would make for a dedicated video. So as far as the videos go, we're done. It's done. But I'm going to button it up because I plan on just, again, like I said, daily beating this at least for the next few weeks. Uh, if you really want to see the installation of quail packs in the Mini Cooper, something you kind of already saw in today's video, let me know in the comments and I will We'll post a quick time lapse over on my Instagram, which is right here, or you can find it easily by just clicking the link in the description box. And guys, I want to thank each and every one of you for watching today. I'll catch you very soon.